So around two years ago, I think I made this video. And basically what this video is, is creating a pick-fed roster based on how good wrestling action figures feel in hand. We're taking WWE Elites, we're taking AEW Jazzwares, Unrivaled, Unmatched, Supremes, Ultimate Editions, taking the entire landscape and creating a pick-fed roster based on how damn good the figure feels in hand and how well it poses around. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video today, man. Like I said, we're throwing it back. This is a video that was recommended to me by my man Rob Schwartz, who is a fellow patron member and a big supporter of the channel. He's been around for a while now. And he was actually the original creator of this video and who came up with the idea and pitched it and wanted to see this video. And we're running it back, man. I think this is a great video. And basically, again, like I said, I mean, we are pretty much taking a MDT pick-fed roster. Now, I'm not going to be crowning champions. I'm going to leave that up to you. You guys can kind of crown the champions based off of my rosters that I pitch here today. But if you look back at that video from two years ago, which makes me want to vomit, by the way, he reminded me that there are a lot of figures in that video that probably are not going to be in this video, man. We've had so many new figures, so many upgrades, and today we're going to be diving into my updated best roster that you can make out of great figures that feel good in hand and whatnot. So that's kind of what we're messing with here. And again, I removed all my biases here, and I am going to say like this is trying to be as modern day as possible, okay? There are obviously some Legends figures and maybe some other talent that probably would have made the roster potentially. Just like an example, like Macho Man Randy Savage or something like that. Maybe he could have made the roster, but essentially what it boils down to is making a pick-fed roster out of the figures that feel the best in hand and pose around the best. Now, I think we have around 40 talents here. We have some tag teams. We have some ladies. We're going to dive into it, man. But things have been cooking, man. Things have been cooking behind the scenes. Lots of things behind the scenes have been going on. If you're a patron member, you know what I'm talking about. Lots of things in the works that should be finalized very soon that I'm very excited about, man. But nonetheless, now before we dive into my roster, I have four talents here that have amazing figures, but I could not pull myself to put them on my actual roster. So I didn't sign them to a contract. However, I did want to give them a dishonorable mention. First up, we have Logan Paul. This is the top talents. You could use the Ultimate Edition or the top talents, man. This figure posts around fantastically. It, it is a beast of a figure in terms of posability. Ball joints, moves around great, double jointed arms. It checks all the boxes of a great MDT figure. Now, if you see a figure in this video, you need to effing buy it. Every figure in this video is a go buy it. Like, it feels immaculate in hand. It checks all the boxes. Next up is Damian Priest. Now, Damian Priest, you could pick this one or the all-white gear. really doesn't matter matter. They're both the exact same, except one of them's a repaint. Damn good figure. Not a big fan of the guy, so I put him here. Next up, Austin Theory. This is the Elite 102 Austin Theory. Figure is insane, man. I mean, head sculpts aside, we're not talking about that here today. This basic on this figure pretty much makes this figure perfect. I mean, this figure's damn perfect pretty much for the most part, so head sculpt was just so damn bad he couldn't, you know, he couldn't fight nobody, but yeah, he's a, he's a dishonorable mention, and the last dishonorable mention for figures that feel immaculate in hand, pose around fantastic, I I just hate him. It's gonna be Trash Corbin Elite 99, man. I mean, what do you want me to say? Look at this guy. He he poses around great. Look at him. He's all sad. He's a dishonorable mention, you know, but I wanted to give these figures a little bit of... I wanted to give them some praise because these are top-of-the-line figures of all these guys, and they pose around great. I'm just not booking them. Now get the hell out of my face. So let's move this back here, man. Let's get into our tag teams, and then we're gonna get into our mid-card and our main... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. All the mid-card and main guys are kind of mixed together. Nonetheless, I'll shut the hell up, man. Diving into my my tag teams first. This is an actual MDT exclusive tag team. It's the Monsters from Hell or whatever. I still, I, this is actually an assignment. Somebody needs to come up with a damn cool nickname for these guys. Monsters from Hell is what I have right now. You know, if you can come up with some great stuff or something like that, but this Ultimate Edition Kane is unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. And then I paired it with this Braun Strowman. Now, I did do a leg and boot swap on this guy, but he still has a really good ab crunch and he's pretty buttery smooth, man. I, I enjoy the massive figure here and he's, he's, he's good. I like both of these figures a hell of a lot. That Kane Ultimate right there, it literally could set your house on fire. So, I wouldn't trust him, you know what I'm saying? So, I'd look out for him. Our next tag team, man, is a tag team that returns to this video. We have the Unrivaled Series 3 Young Bucks on ball joints, can pose around fantastic. These guys make the cut every time. Double jointed arms. I really wish we had Supreme Editions of these guys, but they're still just unreal. They're unreal. They pose around great. I like the cloth tassels over the molded tassels, so I put the Young Bucks in there, man. They're just, they gotta be in there. They pose around really damn good. Really cool move sets. Great stuff about those guys. Another pick fed team that makes the cut for me, and it's kind of cheating, which we'll get into, man. We have the Wyatt Colt or the Bludgeon Brothers slash Harper and Rowan. Whatever you want to say 
say, man, the Elite 35 Luke Harper figure with the Elite 66 head sculpt is unreal. I got this custom shirt on there, which stained the hell out of the figure, but it's damn good anyway, man. And then this Eric Rowan is fantastic. Even though, even though they're single jointed arms, these guys pose around so damn good and feel so good in the hand, they could not be left off, man. They had to make the list. I love that. That Harper and Rowan are fantastic, man. Rest in peace to Brody Lee. Absolute madman. That those figures are fantastic. Couldn't leave them off my list. Next up, man, we got some cool ones right here. I'm excited for these. We have Elite DIY, man. Elite 105 Johnny Gargano paired with the ringside exclusive Tommaso Ciampa. And I know their gear's not accurate. It doesn't really matter because we're talking about how damn good the figures are and how damn good the figures are. Are yeah, they're making the tag team cut? These guys are both on ball joints. They both pose around well. Double jointed arms across the slew. Elite DIY coming in hot in my tag team division. Next up, guys, we have the Usos. Now, last time I think we had the Elite 64 Usos in here. Now we have Ultimate Editions of them. And I know you're going to say, you know, what about the Ultimate Edition feet? They're damn awful, okay? They are damn awful, but these guys still pose around well. When you have a double jointed arm, paired with the butterfly joints, paired with the drop down hips, you got, you got ball joints, you have, you know, the, the same what you will about the feet. They piss me off, but you can still get these guys in really good poses. And that's too much articulation to turn down so we do have the ultimate edition usos in here man could not leave those guys out of my uh my roster right here if we're talking about posable tag teams that make the cut that those guys have to be mentioned in here and our last tag team that we have man is going to be the house of black man had to include them this brody king is unreal it's easily up there for a contender for figure of the year for the AEW and Jazzwares figures. And then I had to pair him with a really good figure. And this Buddy Matthews, while he has a massive head and everything, he still feels immaculate in hand. It's just the knee pads that hinder him, but you could easily swap those. So, you know what I mean? I don't think that's the biggest deal there. So, this Brody King is unreal, had to be included. And if you're going to put him in a tag team... I put him with Buddy Matthews, man. Really damn good right there. So that is my tag team division for posable ass action figure. All right, man. So now it's time to get into our singles talent, man. And this is in no particular order. It's just kind of rambling off and we're going to get into all the things, man. So let's shut the hell up and dive into it. Starting off first, man, we have the Ultimate Edition Shawn Michaels. Now this is a 2004 Shawn Michaels fix up, but it wouldn't matter if it was the fan takeover. It's essentially the exact same figure, man. It's essentially the exact same figure and it poses around really damn good. Shawn Michaels is one of those guys that posed around really good anyway. So, you know, it's it doesn't really matter. This Shawn Michaels can pose around with the best of them. He had to be included here today. Another great Ultimate Edition and a guy who didn't make the cut last time because he had a trash formula and he didn't have an Ultimate Edition just yet, of course. The Elite 104 AJ Styles could suffice, but this one probably poses a little bit better given that it has butterfly joints and given that it has some cool stuff. Now, you kind of have to pick your poison because the Elite 104 AJ Styles has the accu more accurate torso, in my opinion, and more accurate skin tone, but I couldn't leave off how posable... Uh, I couldn't leave off how posable that AJ Styles figure is. God in heaven, buddy, you trying to embarrass me in front of everybody? You know what, Brad? You're cut. Get get the hell out. Next up, man, we have Elite 92 Adam Cole, man. Or I should say Bebe. Now, you can, it doesn't matter if you have the William Regal thighs and legs or the Cody Rhodes thighs and legs or, you know, the Bo Dallas style, whatever the hell you want to say, man. Doesn't really matter. Guy posted around really damn good because he's on ball joints. He has double jointed arms. It's it's end of the line right there, man. He, he He's better than the Jazz Wears version. I don't like the way the Jazz Wears version looks. Next up, we have Shelton Benjamin. Now, this is the Ruthless Aggression version. He has double jointed arms. And he's not on ball joints, but he still poses around really fun. I mean, he's, he still feels immaculate in hand. Great figure. Great overall Shelton Benjamin right there, man. I love that Shelton Benjamin figure. Probably one of my favorite Mattels of all time. It's definitely up there. It's it's up there, man. Like, last year, we had some of my favorite Mattel elites ever released. It's kind of insane. I need... I still have never done my top 10 elites of all time, my top 10 ultimates of all time. I really need to do that, but anyways, man, let's dive into it. Diving deeper on my roster. You couldn't have a roster without the Ultimate Edition Randall Keith, man. This is a guy I wanted an Ultimate for a very long time. First of all, massive Randy Orton guy, but he poses around so damn well, and he can finally RKO people properly. He can reach around right here. That's a little sus. And you know what I'm saying? He can properly hit an RKO, man. He can properly RKO the hell out of somebody. So, I mean, that's that's all you need, man. Now, don't get me wrong. Drop-down hips on Ultimate Editions can be very, very annoying. But I do enjoy a damn good butterfly joint, man. That's kind of what this Randy Orton offers right here. And I'm not going to argue with it. Next up, we have an Elite, man. And this one's going to be replaced very soon. But it's the Elite 75 Pete Dunn figure. I cannot believe this is Elite 75. That feels like... 
what the hell are we even doing? But the Elite 110 is going to replace this one. That one has double jointed arms. Of course, that is going to be butch, but it's going to be in white gear and double jointed arms. So this P. Dunn is going to have to suffice. But what makes him so nice is that he doesn't have any knee pads. So he poses around really damn good. And I love this figure. That's a good one right there. I don't I don't know if he made the cut last time, but he should have. He definitely should have. Next up is the Supreme Malachi Black. Now, I have to give an honorable mention shout out over here to the Unmatched Collection Series 8 Malachi Black because both of these guys are so damn poseable, and I just want to throw black masses out to everyone, just, just knocking kids the hell out, not children, but, you know, just guy, other, other guys, so yeah, we have a beautiful Supreme here with Malachi Black, and then we have our suited version, which is just unreal, can't wait to see him on an MDT television, honestly, I just want to see MDT television, you know what I'm saying, I don't really give a damn who's on the screen, Custom characters are, are being booked. Next up, I think this is Elite. Is it Elite 99? I think this is Elite 99, Matt Riddle here. Fantastic, man. He's got shin cut in there, which you guys know Mattel doesn't typically do for us. Double jointed arms, really poseable. No knee pads, so you can get a great knee joint in there. Really poseable feet. Really fun guy, man. Really fun guy to pick up and pose around. I find myself picking him up all the time to pose around. And, I, I dude, that's just one of the best things, man. Matt Riddle is a, is a great poseable figure. I like this formula on here. I think I... Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I, I like it. I like that right there. That's a good posable figure right there is Matt Riddle. Another guy who did not make the list last time for some for some different activities. It's going to be Jeff Hardy. This is the Ultimate Edition Jeff Hardy. Now, the reason that he didn't make the cut last time is his figures used to be really, really stiff, man. And uh, the legs on this one are not the best, but I could sacrifice that because he actually has butterfly joints now and double jointed arms. So you can get this guy in some pretty cool poses. Now, if they really wanted to put Jeff over the top, they'd put him on ball joints and hopefully i'm just praying that we see a supreme jeff or an unrivaled jeff this year that's really good but i, I just he's gonna be nine seven and that's what's gonna piss me off but the ultimate edition jeff already did make the cut i like that one better than the other one just simply for the torso another guy we have in here man is going to be elite 104 braun breaker what a stud figure man elite braun breaker the pink gear is sick but he just feels so good in the hand he's got an elite formula pun intended man just a fantastic formula feels good in the hand officially signed to smackdown now I love that Braun Breaker figure. Another guy that makes the cut and feels fantastic in hand is Apollo Crews. Still don't have the Chase version. I definitely would have put the Chase version right here if I had it, but this figure is just unreal. Another guy that's in a perfect formula, guys. When you have these leg molds on ball joints with double jointed arms, you're, I mean, you're cooking with fire already, man. I mean, there's no, no buts about it. That figure is insane. Another guy that poses around just unreal. He's an AEW Jazzwares figure. He is probably my second favorite guy to collect out of AEW and Jazzwares. Wears. We have unrivaled or unmatched Darby Allen. This is the unmatched series one, but it doesn't matter. Every Darby Allen that they make seems to be better than the the last one. It's just un it's just insane how well this man poses around. Again, he has no knee pads, so that probably helps him a ton. But the double joint arms, he's just always buttery smooth. I never pick up this guy and go, damn, I hate this. Every time I pick it up, I'm like, damn, what a joy this is. This is nice. And that's always what you like to see. So Darby Allen had to be on my roster. He wasn't getting cut, Brad. He had to be on there. Another guy that makes my roster is Elite Series 107 Undertaker, man. I love this figure. He's always been on ball joints, so he's always been able to pose around really, really well. You throw in double jointed arms on this figure right here, man, and you're going to have some great stuff going on. I love this. I love this a lot. Great figure overall. Feels so good and tight in hand. Just feels like he's going to beat the hell out of you in your sleep. And if my figures aren't assaulting me in my sleep, I don't want them. Next up, man, we're getting into another Elite, and it comes from the number one WWE Elite of 2023, the SummerSlam Elite Dolph Ziggler, man. Unreal posing. And again, it has that same Apollo Crews Braun Breaker thing where it has a fantastic leg mold on ball joints, double jointed arms, buttery smooth. It's going to check all the boxes for you, man. It's it's going to check all the boxes. It just poses around so damn nice. It's undefeated. Let's scoot the camera back a little bit here. Next up, we have another AEW figure, man, and it is going to be the Supreme Collection CM Punk. The scale aside, very poseable, man. Such a fun figure to pose around, man. When you can go across right here and give this man the cross arms and then he can do the X across the chest. I mean, dude, this guy can pose around with the best in the business. You're not, 
not, you're not going to be upset about this figure, man. And I know the knee pads are a little bit annoying, but this figure is unbelievable. Unbelievable CM Punk right there. He is super poseable. You're not effing with that one. Another great figure, man, is going to be the Ultimate Edition Rob Van Dam. Another guy that was left off the list last time. He didn't feel great in hand, man. Elite 27 was all we had from Rob Van Dam. Now we've got the Elite 91. We got the Ruthless Aggression Era. We got the Ultimate. And all things considered, I like the Ultimate the best because of the butterfly joints. Even though I love the Elite 91 and it's fantastic, I just think I like having that butterfly joint right there. It really does help with the posing. Even though I hate the ab crunch, I, you know, I hate Ultimate Edition ab crunches. I do like the addition of a butterfly joint. Now, you know, I guess we'll see what comes of all these things. But yeah, RVD had to be included. Another Elite Man, we have Elite John Cena in the short shorts. Now, I would have put the Ultimate Edition Cena in here, but you guys know I hate the feet. And I know he has butterfly joints, but I think we're going to get a better version of John Cena, hopefully this year, in an Ultimate Edition. And maybe, you know, this one could be retired or something. But this guy's just too fun to pose around. He just feels so damn solid. And if you've posed around John Cena figures, you know how, how solid they are. The short short mold is just undefeated. Next up, we have Elite Kevin Owens, man. Elite Kevin Owens right here is another beast. Just a fantastic figure of a raw. Double jointed arms. You could even use the Survivor Series Elite if you really wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It's double jointed and it poses around. Well, I always have a ton of fun posing Kevin Owens figures around. He's on ball joints. I know the ab crunch isn't there, but especially when you're fetting, if you cut off the shirt and put a custom shirt on there, it really doesn't hinder it whatsoever. So that's always nice. And I hope to see the ultimate edition of him very soon. And he'll probably replace that figure this year. But next up, man, we have the Elite 102, I think it was. Elite 102 Gunther, man. This one right here, I think, was the number three figure of the year last year. This one's unreal. Unreal posability. Love this torso. Buttery smooth. Just so buttery smooth. I mean, the guy, again, no knee pads, so you're not going to have any hindrance right there, man. Look at him right there. Looks like he's going to kill you. Un, un, unbelievable. Great figure there with Gunther. Next up, man, we have kind of a hot take here, but we have Cody Rhodes. Now, this is where you got to pick your poison here, man, because I honestly, I don't like Corso on these Ultimate Editions, but I went ahead and gave it an honorable mention here for the Cody Rhodes Ultimate Edition, but I love his elites. His elites pose around so damn good, and again, ball joint legs with this leg mold with double jointed arms. He's pretty much on the same formula as Dolph Ziggler. You got a winner in that right there, man. You're not going to lose with that. You're not going to lose with that. So yeah, Cody Rhodes is absolutely on there. Any modern Cody Rhodes Elite, and I'll give it to the Ultimate. You could put the Ultimate on there if you wanted to, but all right, man, we're narrowing down to the, the last few here. Next up, you have kind of a mix and mash, and I'll give my reasons why. Ultimate Edition Rey Mysterio, Ruthless Aggression, and the Top Picks Elite Rey Mysterio. Now, this one's really damn good, but it is a throwback Rey Mysterio, so if you want a modern Rey Mysterio, you gotta go with the Elite, but if you're gonna go with a throwback, the Ultimate is very good, and I know we're getting that damn... The modern Rey Mysterio should have won the fan takeover. I don't know why we got that SmackDown debut one, especially since you're not even gonna be able to include all the Spider-Man logos and shish, so that's very upsetting. But these figures pose around so good. Rey Mysterio had to make the cut. You weren't leaving off Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio has some of the best figures you'll ever see on the planet for Mattel, and if I were to rank my favorite Mattel Elites of all time, that pink Rey right there is gonna be up there, man. He, I mean, he is a stud. Next up, we have have the Ultimate Edition. The rest of the figures are Ultimate Edition or Supreme Collection. We have the Ultimate Edition Roman Reigns. Unbelievable. Unbelievable posability. Love it. I, I, I can't get enough of this figure, man. I really, I, like, I, I love this this Roman Reigns, and I got some special things cooking up for the, the MDT champion. He had to be included. There's no way I wasn't including him. And I want to say, didn't I say there was 40 guys here? I'm going to count at the end, but I want to say it is 40 guys, and I can't remember how many I had last time, but, you know, this is a full roster, man. Full roster that we went with. Next up, Ultimate Edition Seth Rollins. I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing here, man? Had to have Ultimate Edition Seth Rollins in here. We weren't getting away from the Messiah or Seth Drippin' Rollins. He had to be included there. Next up, we have the Supreme Edition Kenny Omega. One of... This is definitely... I don't want to be crazy. This may be a top 10 wrestling action figure of mine of all time. And there may be others on this list that are in that category as well. I don't know. But modern wrestling figure, man, it's got to be... It's top 10 ever. I mean, it's unreal. This is a figure... And it just kind of imbibes, and I know that really doesn't have anything to do, like, this isn't a ranking series. This is the figures that pose around and feel the best in hand, but this figure checks all those boxes, but at the same time, this Kenny Omega Supreme, and just his first figures overall from Jazzwares, were so vital to wrestling action figure history because of the lore of Kenny Omega. I don't think that gets talked about enough, man. I don't think that gets talked about enough. I need to do a whole topic series on how important the damn Jazzwares Kenny Omega figures are in the history of wrestling action figures, but nonetheless, man, he would absolutely 
absolutely make the cut. Elite champion himself. Next up, man, we have the Ultimate Edition Finn Balor. Now, I don't think this made the list last time, but I had to have Finn Balor here because of... This figure's actually really good. Now, I don't like the ab crunch as much, but having a double jointed arm Finn with the bigger legs is, is so important in my opinion. And I still think he poses around really good, and he's got that toe joint and stuff like that. I like the Ultimate Edition Finn, but he God in heaven, man. If they don't give us an Ultimate Edition WrestleMania 39 Finn Balor, I'm going to commit... I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but give him the Seth Rollins torso, paint that thing up, give him solid-sized legs, don't give him those tiny-ass legs, and let's get, let's cook this man up. They'd be the figure of the year, no doubt about it. It would kill everyone. And the last male figure, I have two female figures we're going to talk about. The last male figure that is included, man, is going to be the Ultimate Edition Brock Lesnar, which may be another top 10 Mattel action figure of all time. Unbelievable figure, man. This is the embodiment and the standard of a Mattel figure when it comes to posability and likeness to a character. But we're just talking about feel in hand and posability today. This figure right here is just the epitome of feel in hand and posability. That's how good this is. And if we never get another Brock Lesnar again, this one suffices for all. There's our Brock Lesnar. And then we have two women's figures that we have to get into before we get Get the hell out of here. The first one is going to be the second best Mattel women's figure of all time, in my personal opinion. The Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey. Unbelievable feel in hand. I have touched on this many a time. Can compete with the men. Can beat the hell out of them in terms of posability. That women's figure right there was the epitome. She was the standard until this year. And now we have a brand new best women's action figure that Mattel's ever made, especially in the wrestling space. And that is the Ultimate Edition Asuka. It, it speaks for itself, man. If you find this figure, purchase it. Doesn't matter if you don't collect female figures, this is a fantastic piece. The butterfly joints, the sculpts, the posability, everything about it. You want to pose around a women's action figure, this is the standard now. This is the standard, man. And that is my complete roster of the best feel-in-hand action figures for the ultimate MDT pick fed or whatever the hell, man. If we were just making a roster based on posability and feel-in-hand, this would be my roster. Now, we have a ton of crossover. There are plenty of guys in here that are not officially in the fed, but there's a ton of people in here that are in the fed. And that's just coincidence, to be honest with you. But a lot of my favorite guys are represented here. I mean, there's so many damn good figures here, man. It's unreal how good figures have become. And we're living in the golden age right now, man. This is the golden age of wrestling action figures in terms of all the companies and different figures we're getting. Just unbelievable standard. The standard for these figures is just insane. It's crazy, man. But huge shout out to my man Rob again for the idea for the video, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. You know, I hope the video was everything you wanted it to be, bro. Oh my god, there's a ladybug on Cody Rhodes. Where the hell did he come from? Jesus. A lot of ladybugs like to attract to this room, but nonetheless, man, I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Again, things are cooking, man. Lots of things cooking behind the scenes that I can't wait to showcase. And a lot of the stuff you're gonna see, I don't know if it'll be this week or the next week, but you'll start to see like some additions that will be added added in, and that'll make more sense as we go on there, but patron members, huge shout out to those guys, because they get to see all this stuff first, they have been behind the scenes already getting stuff, and seeing stuff, and you know, things related, and all that different stuff, man, so huge shout out to those guys over there, I appreciate each and every one of you, even asking their feedback for things as well, so that's always great, man, but I'm getting out of here, man, thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys, I will see you guys in the next video, have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>